we read Shelly Beach. Are you considering going down under but you're not really sure if you should or not and this is the video for you <laughs> I'm gonna tell you 10 tips for traveling Australia Australia is amazing everything that you ever dreamed of paradise on earth traveling in a fight at combi on a hippie trail head full of zombies I met a strange lady she made me nervous she took me in and gave me breakfast so first things first, you need to set up your visa. You do this by going online to the Australian government page, find the working holiday visa, download it and just fill out all your details, send it in and you'll get your visa within like 24 hours. It costs about 420 Australian dollars <laughs> and also it says that you need to have about 5,000 Australian dollars to even get into the country but to be honest you never know if they're gonna check this or not. They didn't check it for me and I didn't have that amount when I arrived <laughs> but at the same time you want to be sure that you have enough money to survive in case you wouldn't find a job or something so it might be wise to save up before just to have that sort of safety to fall back on in case you can't find any work. So now that you have your visa, you basically are set to go. If you want to do what I did, you travel straight to Melbourne and you work for three months to save up for your travels. But you could also first have saved up and do some travels and then stop to work. So decide whether you want to travel first or if you want to stay longer in the place and work to start off with. Regardless of if you want to travel around or stay in a place and work for longer, you should definitely find a hostel to arrive at because it's a great place to meet people. Just so that you know, in Australia, you will most probably be staying in hostels 99% of the time because accommodation is so expensive. Even for a dorm room in a hostel, you can pay somewhere between $15 to $30 per night per person. Like what? So be ready for sharing your room with a lot of messy people. Now, say that you want to stay and work in a place for longer, you want to look for jobs and apartments. A great place to do this is on a website called Gumtree, which is basically a website where people can post stuff like flat shares, if they're looking for people to work in a cafe, if they're looking for a nanny. I actually found both of my cafe jobs through Gumtree. <laughs> and now it begins again, Anya staring dead into the distance because she doesn't know what she's gonna say next. I need an apple. Now, if you do the traveling my way, you'll start in Melbourne. And trust me, Melbourne is hipster heaven. They have all this grungy street art, a lot of underground clubs. They have really cool music scenes. So you'll have these like local artists and bands playing. They also have a lot of buskers all over the streets and a lot of street performers. And the coffee is the best coffee that you'll ever have in your life. One thing that you have to do when you're in Melbourne is go visit the Queen Victoria market during Wednesday nights because then they have this global food market. They'll have Spanish food, Japanese food, Indian food, Swedish food maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, it's amazing and there's a mix of both locals and tourists so it's a really good vibe. Another thing that you have to do when you're in Melbourne is go to the St. Kilda Pier during dusk because then they have these little mini penguins coming in from the ocean and it's just the cutest thing you'll ever see. The third tip I have to you when you're in the Melbourne area, go drive down the Great Ocean Road, which is like a road going along the coast. So you'll have these amazing, stunning scenery when driving. Along this road, you'll pass by the 12 Apostles, which is a world heritage site. It doesn't even look real. <laughs> now when you've spent a few weeks in Melbourne earning your money in a funky hipster cafe, you'll want to start traveling. Now the most common way to travel up the East Coast is by Great Greyhound, which is a bus company that takes you from Melbourne all the way up to Darwin. And you can either buy separate tickets from town to town, or you can get like a hop on hop off pass, which I think is the most convenient if you want to travel all the way up to Cairns or Darwin. You can also travel the coast by renting or buying a car or hitchhiking, but I think the bus is really nice because you meet so many people on there that you can go adventuring with when you reach your destination. Now here's a list of stops that I think that you have to have to do along the East Coast. The first one is Coffs Harbour. Not that many people go there, but it's 
it's really cool. They have such amazing hostels which provide you with like free surfboards. There's this jetty that you can jump from, 7 meters above the ocean level. And there's waterfalls that you can drive to in the national parks close by. It's really cool. Second one is Byron Bay. Byron is my favorite place. It's a coastal town that has this hippie vibe, but it's still really upbeat. There's a lot of activities to be done there. And you need to head up to the lighthouse. You can actually spot both whales and dolphins from the top outlooking the ocean. Stop number three that you have to do is Fraser Island, which is this massive sand island where you go on these tours with jeeps. So you all drive around on the sand and camp out on the island for like three days. It's amazing. And you'll have the best view of the stars. You literally see the Milky Way because there's no lights on the island. The fourth stop on my list is Whitsunday Islands. It's a group of islands outside of the coast and they are just the most beautiful spot. You usually go on tours where you go with a group of people on a sailboat, you sail around the islands, you go on land and you watch these amazing pristine beaches. Just imagine like turquoise blue waters, you can spot turtles, you can snorkel, you can try diving. Incroyable. By now you've pretty much made your way all the way up to Cairns, which is almost at the top. And in Cairns there's so many adventurous stuff to do. You can go water rafting, you can also try skydiving. You know that feeling when you're sleeping and you're dreaming that you fall and you get this like pit in your stomach and then you wake up? The first seconds jumping out of the plane feels like that. Then you just feel like the freest bird that's ever lived. And also your cheeks go really wobbly when you do it. <laughs> Because Kansas is a tropical area, there's also a lot of waterfalls in the rainforest. You can just like go exploring there forever. I stayed up there for five months working. And honestly, even if it's a really small town, I had the best of times. So in case you're running out of money when you get up there, don't worry. It can be kind of hard to find a job there though. So make sure to be really persistent. Walk around to all the cafes and deal out your CV. Go on Gumtree and like really, really look. It is there if you want it, but you have to work for it to find it. Now at this point, a lot of people want to get their second work and holiday visas because they've had the best of times and they don't want to leave Australia yet. In order to get this one though, you need to work for three months at a remote area farm. Within the first year, I didn't do it myself, but I've heard so many stories of people ending up in really bad situations where they're basically stuck there and they kind of get in debt and so they just need to keep working at this farm. But I've also heard a lot of good stories and it's a good opportunity to get to know people really well because you're working together like 10 hours a day out in the open field and stuff. Just make sure to do a lot of googling and oogling before deciding on where to go. Now something that so many people asked me when coming back from Australia was the spider situation. Literally everyone seemed to think that Australia is like a massive spider web. Let me tell you guys, I honestly didn't see that many. Okay, actually I did see quite a few big ones, but it's not like they were in my everyday life scaring the heck out of me. The one thing that I did have a problem with though was cockroaches. Blech. We literally have cockroaches living in our kitchen, so every morning before work I would have to turn the lights on, wait for 5 minutes for the cockroaches to scatter before going in to get my breakfast. They were literally this big, Ugh, I hate them. So be aware of the cockroaches before entering the country. However, the fact that Australian people are so open hearted and laid back and just really welcoming makes up for the disgusting creatures that they have in the country. Their accent is amazing. And like if you cross streets and you meet someone, they'll always say hi. They're amazing. Or don't trust all their stories. If someone tries to tell you that there's drop bears, which is like a mean koala that sits up in the trees, wait for people to walk past just to jump down and attack them, don't trust them. <laughs> they are just being their cheeky selves and trying to trick you. Ooh, and you might be wondering about kangaroos. Do they exist? Can you actually see them in Australia? Can you pet them? Will I get a kangaroo best friend? The answer to all your questions, yes, yes, yes. You can actually find them in the wild, but there's also these kangaroo sanctuaries that you can go to where you get to feed them and like cuddle with them. And they are just like the most adorable thing in the world. They look super chilled out. They're just like lying on the side, chilling, pretending to not care about you. However, they can get quite aggressive. Two kangaroos started fighting in front of me and I was just like, run, Forrest, run. As you notice, I could chat on about this country forever, but my stomach is telling me that I need food. But I'll leave you guys with one last little tip. Watch out for crocodiles. All right, kids, until next time, have a great time, go explore some more, and don't lay on the floor. Toodles. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.